Here are the steps I'll take you through today. Basic tools that I use for making models, tips for number removal, and how I fix seam lines. Starting from the snapped kit, like this, and finishing up with a cleaned, primed kit, like this. Hi, I'm Lincoln Wright, and I made this YouTube channel to share with you my experience as a professional model in Japan. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. Okay, let's go. Here's a sample selection of the kind of tools that I'll use on every model build, especially for Gumpla. Our main task when first building our Gumpla is to get rid of nubs, nub removal. What are nubs? Nubs are those little unsightly bits of plastic left over when we cut the piece from the runners. I break the uh, tools down into a number of categories. First, glue. Uh, usually I'll use a super thin glue. That's one of my favorites. Then nippers. Nippers I'll either use uh, just a premium nipper, depending on the kit, or a combination of one of the cheaper sets of nippers for the first cuts, and then using the premium nippers for the second cut. Uh, next I'll use a selection of files, sandpapers, and uh, these new guard hand uh, stainless holders that I've got for using with uh, their sanding cloth. They're brilliant. Uh, along with that I'll also be using a series of uh, foam sanding. Uh, materials which which have another and slightly different purpose and last but not least a selection of emery boards uh, I've got this one from Daiso two for two dollars eighty here in Australia and uh, they have three components the uh, the pink is the rough one white for medium and then the gray is a polishing step for the advanced section I like to use some soft lacquer putty like this and some sculpting tools to take care of the seam lines nipper strategy one attack the insertion point See how the nub is at the bottom? So if I try to cut it in there, the angle can go in too far, and there's a chance that I'll end up cutting into the plastic. So I like to go from underneath as possible to what I would call the insertion point uh, on, on, the, uh, on the part. So, and you can even back it up a little bit to purposely leave a little bit of a nub. You can see it here, I'll try to get it in camera. I'm leaving a little bit left over. Because see how these the lower end nippers will slide in a little and boom. But that way it's safe and I know I've left over enough plastic. Let's try for another close up in here. It's going off the back here. You hard up like that chance of damaging the part with these cheaper nippers. Cut it back a little bit and very safe but it does leave that nub. But we can fix that. Pull it in again. Huge nub. But yeah, this way the part is safe. I've not damaged it. I've missed a lot of cuts in my career. So that's one way to get very safe cuts with a standard nipper like this. Let me give you a very quick comparison with the top of the range nipper from Guide Hands, the five star one. One of the key things here being, it's only sharp on one side. This side is the push against, and this is the ultra sharp cutting end. I'm going for the same part, Keep it very fair. Go from up underneath again. And I bring it up against the part. Coming back this way. Get a good shot in here. There we go. And whoa! Dude, that was awesome. Ready to make sure we're in the light. Wow. Of course, I cut these back on purpose, but uh, my goodness. The difference really is, sorry for the fingernails, guys. The, the difference really is night and day. I left a little bit of a nub there, but, uh, but wow, right? Look at that. Cool. Nipper strategy two, the flat against cut. Now on these parts, it's actually quite fine. The straight ones like this. Now, cheaper nippers do a really good job. You can put them straight up against it and flat. It's a nice straight edge to get in there on. See that? I can put it right up against the edge and boom. A 
you can see the nubs are minimal. That's why for a very cheap pair of nippers, they're great. Nipper strategy three, the combo deal. Like with many of the magic spells in our big book of spells, combining our spells <laughs> makes them more powerful. And the same can be said with our uh, nipper strategies. You can see just now I've done an insertion cut. Now I'm segueing into a flat against cut. You can see it there and boom. So being able to flip through and being proficient, a flat against and insertion cut at the same time there, boom. Now moving between these saves us time and I feel the precision of the more expensive nippers helps me to make safer cuts. And uh, that can, that can sometimes be worth the extra you pay for them. Nipper strategy four, death by two cuts. Now by far this is the most tool and time intensive strategy to use with nippers and it entails using a cheaper basic nipper for the first cut and then using a premium nipper for the second close cut. Uh, Saying that though, it is probably the safest way to ensure that your parts come out very clean. And in the long run, actually I find it saves me a little bit of time with cleanup because the premium nipper uh, gets such a close cut. Also, it does tend to help, uh, as long as you're careful, it will help your premium nippers to last a little bit longer because we're only using them for precise surgical strategic cuts. And I find I put them down uh, a little bit more safely after I do these rather than when I'm doing my bulk work. Uh, I hope that works for you too. The overall strategy is simplicity itself. Using your cheaper cutter, make sure you choke back a little bit from the insertion point to make your primary cut. Then when you have the piece in your hands like this, you can position it perfectly to come in for a flat against cut with your premium nipper. Here is just an interesting aside. I wanted to test out the Riplar nipper versus the Guide Hand 5.0 and there's really nothing in it. They're both excellent nippers. Uh, the Riplar does just come in a little bit cheaper. So on my next kit, when I'm rocking my death by two cuts nipper strategy, I'll be going with the normal guard hands first and then the Riplars for my precision cuts. Next for flat surfaces like this, once I've trimmed them down and got most of the excess plastic off, uh, I like to use a flat surfaced uh, filing device for these as well. well. One of the ones I quite like is, where's it got a brand on it? It's a Tamiya. This is a Tamiya plastic file. Uh, also, I've been really liking these ones. Um, you can see it in another video I've made, but the guide hands files. And these go, they've got the numbers on them so I can remember it's a 240, 400, 600, and 800 grit. Now, well, first of all, now the reason for using these, uh, the flat edge, is that you can keep it perpendicular. Nice and simple, right? Now, so long as I keep it very careful and steady, it will take off the nub. Too easy, right? Now, one of the downsides to the file, of course, is that it's one grip file. So, uh, I'm very nervous about pushing too hard with this. That's one of the reasons I quite like this one. It's got a, a sanding paper on the other side. Now, 240 is quite aggressive. So, you can see it scratches up your plastic quite a bit but it's very, makes very fast work of the nub. So what I do is I do most of the heavy lifting with the coarse, uh, the coarse grits and then repairing the plastic is basically what these guys do. So I'm keeping it nice and flat like that, even pressure. There's an old toothbrush. I step it up in the grades. Two next. It's basically repairing the plastic surface, not so much the nub. Here you go, three is my 600. You can see that plastic surface is fixing up already. It's becoming a lot smoother. And now number four. Now for painting, that's generally enough. If you're worried about it being just a little bit too rough at the end, you can use one of these three-step sanders. This one's from Daisol. I go, you go P, 
pink, the roughest one. And you just build your polishing, polishing the cracks out, polishing the, the scratches out. As you can see it's much, much, much smoother. Next with the white. And then lastly the grey. It brings a bit of a shine back to it. Now for painted gumpla, this is perfect. It's a bit of a sheen come back. Light scratching, our primer will take care of that. And that's why we use a bit of a surface of primer on that one. But for hand painted finish too, having a little bit of pretexture like that looks awesome. And what about for a rounded one like this? Well, see the top? That is actually flat, so we can go back to our straight files and we'll use two products on this one. So I'm going to kick off with number one. And I'll go across the top to ease that one down. You can see that's mostly gone. Go for two, three, and four. And I do it a check with my finger now because you can feel it. Yep, that nub's gone. However, here you can see this one is stuck on the outside there. It's curved, so that's going to be difficult. So for that one, I use something like this. 400 God Hands tool. It's good for the rounded motion like this. Because it's foam backed and soft, you can polish it in like this. to clean up with this one. White. And great. Boom. Might need a little bit more work. That's basically how I've done it. Yep, nice and smooth. Looks like we might. I don't know whether this will show through with paint. It's always a bit of a gamble. If you wonder why my nails look so good, Oh yes. One, two, and three. Nice. <laughs> hey Link, super important. Do take care of your lungs, guys. All of this plastic sanding means we put up a lot of dust. And to deal with the dust, I use one of these. I've got a dust mask from 3M. Okay, whilst we watch Link, he's going through his usual process here in real time so you can get a bit of a feel for it. I'll recap the major points for the nipper strategy and sanding strategies. Nipper strategy number one, attack the insertion point. Have a really good look at your part and make sure you're cutting it from the right angle. Nipper strategy number two, the flat against cut. Make sure your nipper's cutting surface is up flat against the part. Nipper strategy number three, the combo deal. Make sure you use them together to get the best economy of effort. And nipper strategy number four, death by two cuts. Try using an economy nipper and choking back a little bit from the insertion point and then using a premium nipper to do your flat against precise cut up very close. Sanding strategy number one, file the flats. Work to the strength of your tools. Use the flat surfaced files and sanding sticks to file the flat surfaces of your gumpla. And then move on to sanding strategy number two, foam the curves to take advantage of the compressibility of foam backed sanding products to easily sand down the curved sections of your gumpla. And remember, if you don't like the look of the plastic and it's still a little bit too scratched up, that will buff right out. Use something like an emery board, and I use these ones available to me here at Dysol. They seem a pretty good blend of, you know, price, durability, and availability. And they're exactly the same whether I buy them in Australia or in Japan. Lucky! Hey, thanks for watching that through with me. I hope it was of value to you, and that you enjoyed it as well. Just really quick, I hope you don't mind that I do a quick shout out to the folks who decided to support our channel on Patreon. 
My mate RJ bumped up his pledge to be a top supporter, thank you very much. And Robert B also upgraded his pledge to be able to see the exclusive videos, hope you like them. Newly joining the Brobot team, Brobots, that's good, bros that love bots, robots. We have Christian, SD, John H, David D, Andrew S, Terence B and Pedro Felix. Thanks a bunch guys, it's really good to have you on the team. Okay, more soon, thanks, bye. We currently have a Gumpla group build in the Paint on Plastic Facebook group. Check out the link in the comments below. These memories are from Gumpla Builders World Cup 2018 in Sydney. Please see if you can come along next year. Gumpla Builders World Cup 2018 in Sydney. It was the best time. A personal shout out to my top supporters. Thanks guys. Ivan, MB Grant, Con, Jack, Alexander, RJ, Simon, Robert, Kelso, Kevin, Nilos and David. Cheers guys. An extra special thank you to the Paint on Plastic Patreon community who make this content happen. I couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you very much for supporting me and making this possible. You're still here? Okay. I guess I should show you some more stuff. How about the real challenge of making this kit? Those seam lines!